I grew up with these cars. These are the cars that were on, they were the B Barago cars I had on my dresser as a child. These are the legends of motorsports. It's the cream of the crop, it's the top of Everest. There's a lot of the reason why people come here is to see cars like this because you can't see them elsewhere. I'm not sure what else I could say other than, you know, this is why we come to Goodwood. These cars pushed the boundaries of, of what a supercar was. I mean, the, 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 this, the GT1 series started off somewhere back there with the sort of the F40s, which were basically road cars, and then they morphed to the McLaren F1, again a road car, but then it became the long tail, then Porsche became involved, Mercedes became involved, and it became completely crazy. And these cars that were not really within the spirit of the rules, but they were, they were wonderful. For me, these, this, is, this is the period of motorsport I grew up with as a kid, and, and it'll be great to see these cars one day in a, in a full-on on race series. Always loved GT ones. Always wanted to have one. The opportunity came along, and I bought it. It's the first time this car's been out in public, and I've owned it for about 13 years. It's so cool to be on the grid with an F40 next to you, and McLarens around you, and more 911s, and they're all spitting flames. And... Yeah, it's fantastic, really stunning thing to do. But I've been driving it for 18 years, so it's still great, don't get me wrong, but um, no, I love it, especially when there are other McLarens out there and everything. You know, because now become an iconic thing. It led Le Mans for 13 hours and came third overall in 95, and then in 96 it came fifth overall, I think, and yeah, I've had it nearly ever since. I drove it from London, yeah. I drive it on the road as well. My car's a 1997 Porsche GT1. Um, I've owned it for 10 years. Sadly, never raced it, but uh, enjoy driving it. Yeah. And uh, yeah, it's great to drive it for the first time at Goodwood. 40, I think it's an iconic design. I think I love the fact that it was the last car Enzo Ferrari signed off on. Um, I love the fact that it's a road car. It just looks like an out-and-out -out race car. The rear wing, I think, is the favorite of everybody. The fact that the engine's exposed, the rear grille. Um, there's not a bad line on it. This car's never run before. Um, it's had in collections its whole life, and this is literally the first time the car's gone around a track, ever. So, I'm quite pleased with it. They've modified the F1s in order to make them race prepared. This particular car, uh, 010, is the car that was used as the mule, so it was the test car for the whole program, really. It's had virtually every great McLaren driver in it, so it's, uh, it's got a, a rather nice history. Still got a smile on my face, so you'll probably gather, but uh, I was very lucky to drive the 1998 GT1 Le Mans winning car, um, and it's a fantastic car. The power delivery is phenomenal and the brakes are, you know, fearsome, but just perfect car. I still think I'm going to wake up in the morning and this won't have happened. It's that kind of thing, really. To be honest, they all look gorgeous. I remember the Porsche here when I sort of started racing. That was one of the top drives to get. And I mean, they still look gorgeous now and they're still super fast. I know they were very, very extreme evolutions of road cars, but the fact that some of them are now driving on the road, I think, I think that's, that always captures your imagination a little bit more than maybe a pure prototype. When I first started racing, I really looked at and I coveted these as road cars as well as race cars. There's some absolutely stunning stuff. Um, yeah, it's fun. It's fun to anytime you get a chance to drive something like this and to be a part of this. But only at Goodwood do you does this happen.